Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the next lab of EC 573 Advanced Embedded Logic Design. In the previous lab, we discussed about the F50 implementation on PL, and we also discussed about the F50 implementation on PS via DMA. So the architecture of the previous lab was something like this. So we had the PS, so we had the um, core zero, then we had the PMA, and we have the FFT. So this was a stream interface, and then for the DMA configuration, it is a light info interface. And for this, which is the memory, we had the memory map interface via ACP. Now, in this lab, uh, we are going to use the similar architecture. But uh, what we are going to use, we want to compare uh, performance between ACP and the HP ports. In our theory lecture, we discussed the difference between the ACP and HP ports. We will going to discuss it in more detail in the subsequent lecture. So, but in the today's lab, we will discuss the difference between the ACP and HP port. As we know, the HP port has the direct access to the DDR memory, while the ACP port has the access to the snoop control unit through which it can access the on-chip memory, cache memory, as well as DDR memory. Then a second thing we are going to discuss is about the, okay, to do this one, we are going to use the two DMAs and we are going to use the two F50 IP, okay? one for the ACP and one for the HP. Then we are going to discuss the concept of the cross triggering. Now in the previous lab, what we did, uh, whenever uh, uh, we, we use the ILA, but and whenever we have the uh, certain condition met in the ILA, that corresponding signal we observe. But sometimes our requirement is that whenever we put the breakpoint, whenever our code stop at the particular breakpoint in our uh, PS, we want to observe the data in the hardware at that point. So can we enable or can we trigger ILA to capture the debug signal, whatever we have uh, uh, made the signals as a debug, can we capture the debug signal at each breakpoints in C or C++ code? So this is the one which is called as cross triggering because you are uh, breakpoint has happened in the PS and that will trigger your ILA in the PL. Same thing is that uh, can we uh, trigger SDK debugger. So your C code should stop at that point when ILA trigger condition is met. So whenever certain condition is met in the ILA, ILA gets triggered. Can ILA stop the execution of the, pause the execution of the C code at that particular time? Okay, so that we can see the value of the CPU register or the value of the, uh, the variables at that particular time. So this is the concept of the cross triggering, which we are going to use it today. So in the today's one, you will be using the ILA in more detail. You will get more comfortable with the ILA and you will also know how to make use of the cross triggering. 
Okay, so overall diagram of the today's uh, lab will be something like this. So you have the Okay, so this is your PS. This is your um, core zero. Then you will have two DMA. So I'll call this DMA as DMA ACP. And I'll call this FFT as the FFT ACP. That is it, it's connected to the ACP board. Then I'll have the DMA HP and then I'll have the FFT HP. So then you will have the, uh, this is the ACP port, okay? Memory mapped ACP port. Then you will have the light port to configure. This is the HP port and you will have the light port to configure. Then you will have the stream interface, okay, to communicate with the corresponding FFT. Okay, so this is what we need to do. And the next thing we need to do is that enable cross trigger. So cross triggering means trigger should flow from PS to PS. So we need to make sure that there is certain connection we need to enable so that the triggers will flow from the one part to the another. So cross triggering we need to enable. So with this, let's go to the reward. Okay, so the initial steps are the same in the Vivado. We will create a project and then we'll start creating the block diagram. So create project. So click on next. So in this lab four, let's say the lab four live. Click on next. So here I'll select the Z board. Okay, so in the reward uh, first step is to create the block diagram. Okay, so in the block diagram, uh, first add the zinc IP. And in the zinc IP, in the first step itself, you need to enable the cross triggering. Okay, so that's the only small changes you need to make in the process. So in the run block automation, you should enable the cross trigger. So cross trigger in, you should enable, and the out also you can enable. Okay, so this is the important step to enable the cross triggering from PS to PL as well as from PL to PS. Okay, after you do this, then you do the regular uh, block automation for the trigger in, trigger out. So with this, uh, uh, you, it will add the ILA so that the corresponding data will be captured by the debugger. So next step is to configure the, your zinc IP. Uh, in this zinc IP, in this project, we will need the ACP ports as well as we'll need the GP port and we will need the uh, HP port. GP port is for the DMA configuration. ACP and HP ports are for the data from the data capturing from the memory for the DAB. So we'll need both the one because we are going to compare the performance of your HP as well as the G, uh, ACP port. So in the PSPL configuration in the uh, HP port add the HP any one of the ports. So let's start with the HP zero and the ACP at the ACP port. So the cross triggering is already enabled. Then in the peripheral one, 
uh, we don't want uh, most of the peripherals. So remove the flash memory, we don't need it. Then remove ethernet, USB, SD card, uh, GPIO, inside the APO timer zero. Then uh, clock is fine. Uh, yeah, rest of the things are fine. Okay, so you can see that uh, now there is the ACP port is there and HP port is also there along with the trigger in and the trigger out. Now, after this, uh, we will add the DMA. So we'll add again AXI DMA. Since we are going to use the two DMA, I'll let me uh, rename that. You can rename it by using the block property. So I'll use this DMA for the ACP port. Okay. So you can see that the name will be changed to AXI DMA ACP. Then like we did in the last lab, uh, we'll configure it with the same uh, mechanism. So, I'm not going to change anything, just make it 64 and yeah, that's it. So this TMA has been configured. Now we'll do the run block automation. So in the run block automation, AXA light port will be connected to the GP port, that is fine. Then in the ACP port, so make sure that you connect it properly. ACP port is connected to the MM2S don't connect the HP0 port because HP0 port is for the other DM. Okay, so be careful about this. So let's regenerate the layout. So you can see that the DMA is getting configured from the AXR light port, uh, which is connected to the uh, GP port of the processor. And then the MM2S port is connected to the ACP port. Now we need to connect the S to MM memory map port again to the ACP port. So we'll do the run connection automation. S to MM, you can see that it is showing for the S to MM. So don't check the HP port here. So now you can see that I'm able to connect the uh, my S to MM port to the ACP port. So what it is showing, it is asking me to connect the HP port to the this DMA, but I don't want to connect it. So I'll make it. Cancel. Now, similarly, I'll add another DMA. So I'll copy paste this DMA to copy and okay. So I'll rename this DMA as a HP DMA because I'm going to use the this connect the port to the HP port of the PSPL. So now uh, for this port, I'll do the run connection automation. For HP DMA, I'll connect the AXI light to the GP0, that is fine. I'll connect the S to MM to the ACP, no, that is not fine. And MM to AS, no, that is also not fine. So I need to see that I have the option, yeah. So here I can connect the HP port, but I can connect it to the HP port here, not to the ACP DMA, okay, HP DMA, okay. So you need to be very careful about this. Okay, so you can see that now, uh, let's regenerate the layout. Now this HP port is now connected to the, uh, the ACP DMA HP is connected to the HP port. Now we need to connect the S to MM port to the, again, the HP port, so S to MM. Now I need to connect to the HP. Again, you need to select it properly to the HP port. Okay, so now I have connected two DMA, one DMA to the, uh, ACP port, another DMA to the HP port. Now I will add the FFT. Uh, I'll first add the FFT for the ACP and then add the FFT for the HP port. So similar to the DMA name, I can change the FFT name so that it is easier to know. So this is the first is the uh, FFT ACP, okay. 
So let's configure that FFT IP. So similar to the previous lab, we will do the 8.50. Then in the implementation, we'll change it to the floating point. Then uh, we'll have the active low reset. And in the output ordering, we'll make it as a normal order. Okay, so these are the three changes in the implementation and our IP is ready for the integration. So then we need to connect the output of the F50 IP to the DMA input. Okay, and the in output of the DMA to the uh, FFT input. So this is my FFT input and I'll connect it to the FFT input. So this is my DMA ACP and this is my FFT. Output of the DMA is connected to the FFT input. F FFT output is connected to the DMA input. Now, I'll have the same IP for the HP port. So I'll just copy paste the IP again. So for this IP again, I'll change the name. I'll connect it to the HP port. And in the HP port, I'll just connect the output of the HP port to the input of the AXI DMA and the output of the AXI DMA stream to the input of the HP port, okay? So please make sure that these connections are uh, carefully done so that you connect the signals properly. Then uh, make sure that the clock and the so the clock signal is connected properly. So I'm connecting clock to the rest of the clock of both the uh, FFT and the reset signal to the rest of the reset signal of both the FFT IP, okay? So this is done. Now only thing which is remaining is the uh, configuration of the FFT IP. So we'll add the first start signal like we did in the last lab. So first constant signal is for the configuration data, which is the eight bit value. So it is the eight bit value it is value one. And uh, then we have the uh, this constant is the connected to the valid signal so that the FFT gets the configuration data. So FFT knows that it needs to perform the FFT operation. Okay, this FFT can perform FFT as well as IFFT along with the different scaling. Okay, so with this, I think we have completed the, our block diagram. And then uh, what we can do is that we can have the debug signal. So this time I'll use only the debug signal, which are the input of the each FFT and the output of the corresponding FFT. Okay, so I'll add this as a debug signal.
then the output of the FFT as the debug signal. Then the HP FFT debug signal input and the output of the FST FFT as a debug signal. Okay, so we can also add the GP port, which is used to configure the both the DMA IP as the debug if you want. Okay, so with this debug, I'll do the run connection automation and I'll add everything to one DM ILA. So in this case, the ILA will be added by the Vivado. So let's do the regenerate layout. And yeah, so you can see that the, the ILA, each same ILA is used for the trigger as well as the uh, capturing the signals. Now in this ILA, uh, in the last time, we had the 1024 samples captured for every trigger. You can change it to 2048, it's up to you. Okay, you can see that the uh, BRAM utilization will also increase. So uh, with this, our block diagram is complete. Now you need to uh, uh, regenerate the output products, HDL wrapper, and then generate the bitstream. 